conversation with a parent. This is the Athletic Scholarship Podcast, episode number 151. A little bit different on this episode of the Athletic Scholarship Podcast. I'm John Fugler, by the way, and we're going to talk with a parent. I'm your athletic scholarship coach, an author, a speaker, and a dad of two scholarship athletes. And we're here to talk about athletic scholarships, recruiting, and how we can bring those two together, right? And we're all on the same path. And uh, this summer, I've got some special programs for you. This is the Summer Recruiting Series. Last week, let me point you back to that week, the must-do next step in the athletic scholarship and recruiting process. Please go back and listen to that. It'll uh, give you some leverage as you work away through the summer. Here we are, the end of June, almost into July. So if you haven't started on your summer recruiting activities, uh, don't wait any longer. Please do it. Please get it done. And uh, I hope today's interview will help you out. Not just my advice, but also we're going to dig into somebody's life. Well, actually, a family's life and find out how they navigated the recruiting process. My guest will be Brent Hanks. And Brent is a dad of two athletes. One is... In college, he just completed his first year, and he started on the Northwestern baseball team. He was recruited to Northwestern and had a good freshman year. Uh, His second son, uh, Sutton, is still in high school. He's a sophomore, and uh, we're going to hear about what Brent is doing now with him. So you're going to hear somebody who's gone through it and is going through it. Speaking of going through it, I've got your Recruit Me Athletic Scholarship Playbook Tip of the Week And it comes from page 86. That's this. One of the best ways you can show coaches you're still interested is by sending one-page updates at key intervals. And hint, summer is a key interval. Keep coaches informed. Would you do that, please? That's something that will push you forward. I mean, it's a simple step and makes a huge difference. It shows that you're still interested. If you haven't watched yet the Recruiting Masterclass, uh, step by step to your athletic scholarship dream. Please go do that. It's free. It's a video on my website. Take good notes. And again, that'll be foundational for your summer. You can see it at recruitme.com slash resources. Just go to the resource page on my recruit me site. And that's also where you'll pick up your freebies that I've been offering. Make sure you get your freebies and, uh, all these things that I'm, Sharing with you, really critical this summer as we uh, have a condensed time. Uh, we're almost to July, as I mentioned, and so time is running out. Well, we're going to get to the interview with Brent, and then I'll uh, have some closing thoughts at the end. This conversation is a long time coming. Our guest and I tried to do this back in February, had some technical difficulties. Uh, he was actually on the road one time uh, driving to see his son compete, and the phone connection was really bad. Then we... Uh, Met up again, and I had technical difficulties on this end. That was back in February or March, folks. And now here we are. Brent Hanks is joining me for a long-awaited interview. This is going to be, I think, because of the troubles we've had getting together, Brent, maybe the best interview ever done in sports history. What do you think? (laughs) Well, let's go for it, John. Okay. Hey, thanks for joining me. And uh, just to set it straight, where are you located right now? We're in Ozark, Missouri, so we're in the southwest part of uh, of Missouri. Okay, Ozark, Missouri, and uh, getting your summer started. Now you uh, you have one son who has competed one year at D one baseball. You have another son who is a senior going into his senior year, and so you're on both ends of the spectrum here. I thought it'd be fascinating to talk with you. Uh, tell us about Parker and uh, where he is competing these days. Your older son. Well, Parker, uh, he played at uh, Northwestern in the in the Big Ten and uh, completed his uh, freshman year, so he's officially a sophomore now. And uh, so they had a, about a 500 season, and uh, he got to throw almost 40 innings. He got to do some relief. Uh, he's a left-handed pitcher. Uh, got to do some relief and ended up uh, starting some midweek games. And then, unfortunately, there was some uh, – our number one and two starter went down at the end of the season, and he actually ended up starting some uh, conference games on Sundays. Wow, that, that's awesome! And you were probably there for just about every one of them, weren't you? Uh, yeah, we uh, we made the eight and a half hour plus 
uh, trip to wherever we possibly could. So uh, we've been to Arizona and been to Duke and been to Georgia Tech and <laughs> been to Michigan. And uh, about the only ones I didn't go to were Ohio State and, and uh, Rutgers. Well, uh, I, I know as parents are just smiling as they hear you because they uh, have done the very same thing uh, and watching their kids growing up. And now you're uh, your son is in college and he's playing and you get a chance to see him compete at the D1 level. Uh, tell me what, uh, maybe your process, your your son made it in a, to D1. He's starting freshman year. Um, tell us about the, just a, a short, a snapshot of what were the most effective things you did and he did in order to land that spot. Well, uh- Yes, I'd be glad to do that. And fortunately, we didn't find you till after he committed, and uh, so we probably would have done a little bit better if we if, if we would have had uh, your information. But uh, we actually started sending some stuff out by email, uh, both video and uh, introductory type of uh, email, uh, right after his uh, sophomore summer, going into his uh, junior year in high school. And we, we, we made a pretty good list, kind of like what you recommend, uh, uh, but we probably only sent to about 15 schools. And uh, we were trying to, uh, we had sat down as a family and, and thought that uh, three or four hours away uh, might be something that we want to do. So, uh, so we started sending some emails and some video out uh, his, uh, right after his uh, sophomore summer season and, and got a lot of D, D2 type of looks. Uh, so really once we saw kind of that he was going to have some opportunities at D2, we started, started looking at some division ones and then, uh, his junior year ended up being like our conference during the year. He had a very, very good year. And, uh, but Parker's five, or he's six, one, 160 pounds. So not, not physically imposing, uh, and doesn't throw real hard. He was throwing in the low 80s, uh, but his changeup is his main pitch. So he wasn't like blowing up the radar gun. But he was and getting so people out. Getting a, a, he, he, he got people out. And so we kind of found out one of the things that we learned is uh, sometimes when you're getting recruited uh, as a pitcher, in this particular case, that getting people out isn't really what they're looking for because they don't really know what competition you're playing hmm. Uh, so the people that got interested in Parker were the ones that had to see him actually perform. And that's why our emails and video were, were pretty important at, at that particular point. So, sure. Sure. Um, in the Northwestern, so, uh, where, where did, uh, the Northwestern coach see him? Well, um, and so we, we were getting ready to go. He had played with a little team Missouri, uh, at a, a junior Sunbelt Belt tournament in uh, McAllister, Oklahoma, and made some good friends uh, with a bunch of kids from Missouri, and uh, they wanted to go up and do a little showcase up uh, south of Chicago, and uh, in the this was late summer of his junior year, and uh, so we hadn't sent anything really up north, so we sent to your alma mater, we sent to Indiana, uh, we sent to Iowa, we sent to northern Illinois, we sent to and, and, and Northwestern just happened to be one of them that we sent uh, information to, and they responded, and uh, the pitching coach came down and watched him pitch and uh, on a Thursday, and we were in the Friday, and uh, uh, talked to him, did a little campus tour, uh, and then uh, he said, well, we're looking at another lefty. We'll give you a call on Wednesday, and they, they called him on Wednesday and said, we want you. You're our last recruit for this recruiting class. Wow. wow. And, uh, yeah, so at Northwestern, uh, they didn't really offer him anything until they could make sure he could get into school. And so we had to wait another step to him to get into school. And one of our one of our deals that I kind of talked to people about is we did a pretty good job doing some homework on the recruiting class and who the, what their roster looked like. So, Northwestern usually only recruits six to eight kids. And so uh, you're not competing against 15 or 20 recruits. You're competing against, you know, uh, uh, you're, you're going to have to contribute when you go to that school. And that's one of the things that helped us make our, make our decision. Sure, sure. Well, the, one of the things that pops into my head as I heard you talk is um, you had the honest conversation with the coach as far as uh, whether there's uh, – 
as far as whether he's going to be their recruit or not. Um, he told you they're looking at another uh, at a lefty. So you got really down into the the stuff you needed to have conversations about. I mean, you didn't talk vaguely, but you talked really direct with each other. Was that a hard conversation to have? It, it really wasn't with this particular coach. Um, so, so we, we really had it seem like we kind of hit it off. Uh, uh, coach Reynolds, the pitching coach is actually from Jefferson. Missouri, so we had some uh, Missouri connections and uh, luckily Parker knew he was going to have a Cardinals fan up there in, in Cub area. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so that kind of helped a little bit. And, uh, and, you know, he had been honest with us and he said, Hey, we'll get him to 86, 87. Everybody else that was recruiting him at a higher level wanted him to come out of high school at a, uh, at, you know, 87, 88. And, and just physically he wasn't able to do that. And, and uh, so we felt Northwestern in this particular case, saw his strengths, saw he could throw strikes and uh, could handle himself on the mound. And they, they felt like they could work. So, so it worked out well. It ended up being a good choice for Parker. So now you've got uh, your second son, Sutton, who's a, who is a he senior this a year. Sophomore. Oh, he's a sophomore this year? Yeah, yeah, he'll be a sophomore. It oh, started oh, with him. Okay, and that's how you got in touch with us. You had uh, actually became a uh, Recruit Me family uh, because you wanted some help with Sutton, even though you were successful already with Parker. T- tell me what you learned uh, through the process so far, uh, even though he's still at the early stages. Yeah, we're, we're, we're kind of going through your steps uh, where we're sitting down and starting to uh, – look at schools. So I, I'm really, what your program really helped us was helped us lock in and, and kind of made us feel like we knew what we were doing a little bit more. And, uh, you know, obviously the first go around with, without a uh, system, we were kind of winging it. So, you know, we had, uh, some fears, we had some, you know, what's going on, why isn't anybody calling type of anxieties. And, and, uh, and so your program kind of, Helped us, helped us kind of get online. So we're we're going through the process with Sutton right now. Um, uh, we're we're just talking about schools, talking right. about you know, do you want to go play someplace? So we're making that list of schools, and uh, we probably won't be sending stuff out till next year on, on him after he gets a a, a, a sophomore season and uh, let him get a little bit physically bigger and and uh, he's he's a catcher and outfielder and has some potential to uh, be a decent hitter, and he's just starting to, to pitch. So uh, so we're not getting in a – we, we kind of know where we are in the program is, is mm-hmm. basically what what uh, your system has helped us with. Yeah, you sound like you're relaxed. It's not like you're pushing it too fast. Uh, you realize that at this point, uh, coaches aren't going to come look at him at this point. He's, uh, you know, after a sophomore year, has a much better chance of, of getting some looks and conversations going with coaches. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we're we're focusing a little bit more than we did with Parker on just uh, Sutton's individual, uh, getting stronger, uh, working on certain skills, and uh, just you know letting him get bigger and uh, you know feeding him more chocolate shakes than probably what we what we did with uh, Parker and trying to get him a little bit bigger. <laughs> That's great, especially if he's a catcher. <laughs> hey, Parker. Yeah, yeah. So I assume Parker throws to Sutton all the time now. They're they're battery mates. Well. They uh, they haven't really you know haven't been together uh, the season. So actually today was kind of one of the first days we got them out there together uh, to to catch catch each other. And, uh, and I told Sutton, I said, if you can catch your brother, then then you can catch just about anybody yes. here going through high school. So yes, that that is great. Uh, it, and it's summer summer season right now, and I always emphasize for my families that every Every program is in off season. I mean, coaches are out there recruiting. It's high recruiting season. What advice would you have for families to make the most of the summer? Well, as so, if you're spending the money to travel, uh, you know, and, and go nice places and go places that, that where colleges are located, as a family, go just drive through the campus just to just to see what what a campus looks like and and start learning and building your building your uh, list of, of places and even if you don't like the facilities or it's too close to home still keep it on your list because 
I, I had a dad the other day uh, say, well, and he's got a, he's got a son that's like a junior going to be a senior. And he said, well, we're playing in Cincinnati. I don't really, you know, we're not going to go to school in Cincinnati. And I said, well, Parker was looking three to four hours away from home and he ended up eight hours away. So you, you never know. So, uh, so here in your freshman, sophomore year, go and kind of just educate yourself on colleges uh, and enjoy playing uh, d- during the summer. So, if because you're probably not getting recruited as a sophomore unless you're just a stud. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, that's wise advice. Uh, I, lo- I love that. You know, cast the net wide. Don't narrow it down too quickly because your best offer may not be four hours away, maybe eight or ten hours away, and and it may be a good fit after all. Exactly. And then, and then you get into your, you know, your junior or senior year, you need to invite, you can't depend on a program. Uh, uh, they're, they're probably sending you and putting you in front of the right competition, but you need to have those coaches know that your son is playing that day and, ha- and invite them to come to your, to your games and uh, let them know that you're interested and the example I use is when you get out of college, you don't depend on your professors to get you a job. You have to go out there and send applications out and go interview and stuff like that. And that's the same thing that you have to do with a uh, to try to get in, into a college. Whether you're playing baseball or not, if, if you do all this work and you decide not to play, you still want to pick a good school for academics. Oh. And so it's, it's not wasted in the long run. Oh, and I love I love that you said that because – we want our athletes uh, to be at the school that's the best fit, and athletics is one part of that. But there's a whole lot more to it uh, when you get to the campus. You got the academics, you got uh, just the feel of the campus, college life, major. What does it have your major? And there are other things, but uh, so very wise yeah. counsel there, Brent, from uh, for from yeah. somebody who has gone through it with one son and now another son on the way. Well. Brent Hanks has been joining us from the Ozarks, and uh, I understand that you were actually out throwing batting practice. Do I need to let you go again? Uh, no, I, I may have to go uh, soak my arm or my hip or my back, but, uh, but I'm okay. <laughs> okay, great. Hey, thanks for joining us on the call and on the Athletic Scholarship Podcast. John, thank you. Brent Hanks, my guest, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed that and got something out of it uh, that you can relate to where you're at if you're a parent Uh, Hearing from other parents is really critical, but more importantly than that, hearing from a parent who's been successful with his son or daughter. And I always say, if you listen to advice, listen to the advice of successful people, not folks who are kind of swimming with you and are not sure what to do next, but listen to the advice of successful people. Well, that's it for this episode. Went a bit long, and uh, but that's okay. I wanted to let you hear from Brent and find out about his kids and and what they've experienced. So uh, that's it for this week. I'll be back again next week with episode number 152. Hope you have a great week.